what is going on YouTube I am germ here and in today's video I wanted to talk a little bit about nemesis and a little bit more about cloud nine because like I said um, you know they've been one of the most interesting teams in the LCS so far they've been one of the more interesting teams in the world through just one week you know it seems like a lot of people are talking about them a lot of um, you know different storylines and things are going on but um, if you guys remember back to this offseason there was actually you know talks and this came from um, you know Jack and nemesis both that cloud nine had actually offered a contract in the mid lane position to Nemesis. Now, obviously, that deal didn't get done, but um, you know it would have made a lot of sense. Obviously, with LS coming over, um, Cloud9 uh, potentially having that mid lane slot open with, with Perks leaving and all this different stuff going on. You know, Fudge could have stayed up in the top lane. Nemesis would have been able to come in, um, but things didn't work out. And you know, uh, we never got. I don't think, at least, I don't you know follow Nemesis and a lot of these things super super religiously, so I don't think we ever got a real hard explanation. Um, obviously, there's uh, just the fact that Nemesis would have to come over. To NA, um, there's money issues, you know, there's there's a whole lot that goes into it. Um, but in today's video, we're gonna talk about one of the reasons, and and you know, it's a little bit of a meme, a little bit of a joke, but I do think it brings up some interesting discussion points um, of maybe why exactly Nemesis did not join Cloud9 in this last offseason, and then you know whether or not it was for the better or not. Uh, so definitely drop a like if you guys do enjoy this video, I would appreciate that a ton, and subscribe to stay up to date on my latest content. Uh, help us run those numbers up, that'd be amazing. With that being said, let's get right into this. So Obviously, this past weekend, Cloud9 had some exciting stuff going on. Um, you know, they are a new team with a relatively young roster. I think they might have the youngest roster in the LCS, if not one of the most um, young rosters in the LCS. Uh, obviously, Fudge, pretty young. Berserker, pretty young. Winsome, pretty young. Um, I don't think any of their players are really, like, old, even old, you know, in the esports sense of things. Um, so, people were unsure exactly how they were going to come out of the gates. Obviously, some language barriers, some experience differences, synergy differences, Fudge role swapping all this craziness going on but uh, obviously cloud nine came out with some interesting drafts some interesting play styles uh, we're able to pull off a couple of wins but uh, this led to a bunch of hot takes a bunch of people throwing out their opinions and stuff and one of the guys chiming in on this obviously was nemesis himself who said yeah I wasn't gonna play Soraka. Obviously, this is in the uh, you know EG C9 game where uh, C9 pulls out the Soraka mid after the Ivern gets banned by Evil Geniuses. Um, you know, I I don't know if Evil Geniuses just realized how OP Ivern mid was, or if uh, you know they just hadn't really prepared for that pick. Obviously, just seeing it the day before and didn't really have an answer or strategy for it or whatever, and just decided to ban it away and thought, hey, if we get rid of the Ivern, you know, we should be good to go. But then obviously, you got to think that. Uh, Ivern is super good uh, in the mid lane, you know, in certain compositions or styles or whatever, but also uh, more so they probably just thought enchanters were pretty good mid and there's like, I don't know, 10, 8, 12, some, some more than a couple uh, enchanters that also work out pretty well in the mid lane. So, you know, you ban away the Ivern. Well, hey, there's still Soraka. There's still all these other different options. You know, like Perk says here, you got Ivern, Soraka, Lulu, Karma. Uh, you know, the list goes on and on and on. Obviously, you even still have things like Seraphine, like Sona. Um, yeah, obviously, those things are going to work uh, to different varying degrees in the mid lane. But you have all these different options. But I did think this was super, super interesting, you know, Nemesis saying, yeah, I wasn't going to play Soraka, obviously hinting uh, at the fact of him, uh, you know, not coming over to Cloud9 because he didn't want to play a bunch of enchanters. Now, I don't know if he's just saying I didn't want to sit there and be on Soraka duty all the time, or if maybe he doesn't think Soraka mid lane is as good, or if he's just totally making a joke. Um, but I did think that this was very, very funny. And it does bring up an interesting point that I kind of wanted to talk about a little bit more as well of how well are all the other players, you know, that are on C9? You know, Nemesis obviously making a joke here saying this is why I didn't come to C9. But um, for the players that are on C9, you know, we've heard guys like Berserker already come out and say that, um, you know, practicing all these off-meta champs and stuff, it can be pretty difficult. Obviously, it was rewarding. They were able to find success this past weekend. But, um, you know, it is a lot more intensive having to practice and, and, and learn a bunch of different champions, a bunch of different matchups, a bunch of different styles where most other teams, you know, they're playing the standard meta. You're getting to play the standard meta and solo queue a lot you're going to scrim against it a lot and scrim as it a lot um as to where you know cloud nine is having to um you know play the meta potentially and off meta and all these different strategies and subsets and all that stuff and right now everything's going good you know fudge 
has a couple of good games. He's maybe a little bit rusty, a little bit nervous about his roll swap to mid. Maybe everything hasn't been going super good for him. Um, you know, in the lock-in tournament, he wasn't amazing playing standard stuff, um, especially, you know, as, as people started to ban out like Victor and Corky from him, it really looked like, uh, and we heard this from some other, you know, LCS players and coaches and stuff that he really kind of took a step down on some of the other guys. So, you know, he was able to play something um, that was able to be really successful for him. And, you know, Cloud9's off to a 2-0 start. But... Winning cures everything. When you're winning, everything's going to be good. Everyone's going to be happy. Everyone's going to be successful. But if Cloud9 ever goes on an extended losing streak, or if the spring split or summer split or playoffs or MSI or Worlds or whatever doesn't go their way, and they're still kind of playing some off meta stuff, or Fudge is still being pushed out to enchanters, or someone doesn't like their role, or someone thinks that a certain draft or certain champions or certain things are stupid, or they don't agree with it, or they have issues... Are problems going to start arouse, uh, rising with Cloud9? This is a question that I really, really wonder. And you might think that, like, um, you know, people don't care about uh, what champions are playing and Nemesis is just trolling here. And and if Enchanters are the best mid and, and you know, you're all about winning and you just care about, uh, you know, winning games, then, hey, you shouldn't mind playing Enchanter and stuff, even if it's not the most exciting, even if it's not the most crazy or whatever. But I will say we see similar issues and debates and stuff happen all the time. And I think most often it's with top laners. Um, I know this has happened on TSM uh, specifically a couple times, obviously the team that I've followed the most historically, um, where back in the day, you know, those those TSM teams, the really, really good TSM teams with Haunter up in the top lane, he was playing weak side a lot when they had Bjergsen, when they had Doublelift, when they had all these guys. But then, um, you know, the TSM roster started to change, you know, Doublelift left, um, Haunter almost won an MVP, he started gaining some notoriety and stuff, and then... That caused an issue. He didn't want to play tanks. He didn't want to play weak side. As the team started to struggle and lose a little bit more, he said, hey, I'm capable of carrying. I'd like to play some more carries. We need to play around me more. We need to give me more resources. And, you know, that caused some conflict and stuff in the team. I think we also saw a similar issue with Broken Blade on TSM, where, um, you know, this guy obviously liked to play carries. He liked to play fast. He liked to play aggressive. Um, he liked to get a lot of resources. And, hey, when the team needed certain different things, like tanks or, um, you know, like weak side or like this or like that, when you're winning, hey, everyone's willing to, hey, make a sacrifice for the team, or this is awesome, or this is great, or hey, I'm, I'm glad things are working out. But as soon as things start to sour, as things start to go bad, as soon as your team starts to struggle for that first time, or maybe, you know, for, for multiple times, or maybe just overall, it can cause some issues. And I, I really do wonder if we're going to see something like this arise in Cloud9, or if, you know, things aren't working. If LS's, you know, Galaxy Brain, whatever, Giga Chad drafts, if they don't work out a couple of times, or if they don't work out in a big moment, or if in a big game or whatever, how are the players, how are they going to feel about that? How is Fudge going to feel about that if he ends up on Enchanters and, you know, they're not able to carry the game, or Blabber runs it down, or Berserker has a bad game, or, you know, XYZ happens, you know, is, is he going to feel like, uh, you know, if I was on Victor there, or if I'm on a carry, if I'm on a champion that can do something, if I'm on LeBlanc, maybe we can win these games. Maybe I can carry, maybe I can pop off. Um, you know, cause, cause obviously at the end of the day, we do know that all pro players, you know, at least to some extent in varying degrees have egos and they want to be the one popping off and they want to be winning games, but they want to feel like, you know, they had an impact. Uh, and again, right now, cloud nine's two and oh, everything's going good. You know, they're trending up, but I do wonder if things sour, if things go bad, how they're going to handle that. And I think, you know, we got a little bit of, uh, of interesting insight into us again. Obviously this is a joke by nemesis. Um, but you know, would every mid laner in the world be super, super excited about coming to Cloud9 and, and, and perma playing Enchanters? Uh, you know, are a lot of guys just going to want to spam an Ivern or spam a Soraka or a Lulu or a Karma or whatever? Every player is different. And every player thinks that, you know, just like LS has, has all his ideas of the game and how it should be played and what's best and how they can best make the team win or how they can help the team. All pro players or coaches or other staff members, all these other people have their thoughts and opinions about it as well. So I think this is going to be something very, very interesting to, to track and follow as the season goes on. Uh, and hey, maybe it had some kind of bearing on why Nemesis did not end up coming to Cloud9. Again, I don't think it was the biggest issue. I don't, it potentially wasn't even an issue at all. Um, but I did think it, it at least, you know, sparked that thought in my head where I wanted to talk about this a little bit. And I just thought it was a funny comment. Obviously, you know, it got like 6,200 likes on Twitter. It was kind of popping off. Uh, they do a really, really good 
good job. And then at the end of the day, you know, if Nemesis did go to Cloud9, you know, would things have been better? Would things have been worse? I don't really know. It's really going to depend on how good Fudge does in the mid lane. You know, overall, I don't think Nemesis was that amazing in the LEC. So I think Cloud9, you know, getting Summit instead of, of Nemesis, you know, I, I think is a pretty significant upgrade and should really work out for the better. But if Fudge just absolutely sucks in the mid lane, then hey, maybe they would have been better with Fudge, who was a pretty damn good top laner. And then Nemesis, again, even though I'm not super high on Nemesis, he could definitely be a better mid laner than Fudge. We'll have to wait and see. I think it's way, way too early to tell. But overall, I'm kind of more excited with the, the lineup that C9 ended up with. Um, even though Fudge is a pretty big question mark in the mid lane, I think he's going to be able to work things out. I think he's going to end up being pretty good. Um, but yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. But hey, maybe this is the real reason that Nemesis did not join Cloud9. But uh, that is pretty much it for this video today, guys. Let me drop a like if you did enjoy it. Uh, I would appreciate that so, so much. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this whole thing. Um, you know, do you think everyone's going to buy into to C9 style? Do you think? it's going to work out do you think they'll have some issues behind the scenes potentially i don't know i'd love to hear guys thoughts and opinions subscribe to stay up to date on all my latest content hope we catch you guys in the next one but until then peace